Welcome back to the Full Force Movie News Burst Weekly Roundup, brought to you by General Joe's Reborn.com with me, Christopher McLeod, aka Diagnostic 80, and Justin General Joe's Bell. In these incredibly irregular movie related episodes, we bring you all the news from the G.I. Joe movie world. What is it, Justin? It's the Full Force Movie News Burst Weekly, only it's not weekly anymore. It's a roundup every <laughs> so just, often. It just happens to be on the weekend right now. So maybe we've <laughs> got the weekend roundup. But yeah, there you're you right. Go. It's a regular. Um, much like just ourselves. Like me. Yeah, just much yes. like ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, nice to have you back. We've got some we've got a bit of movie news to talk about. Yeah, it's exciting. It's more general movie news from this point onwards, I'm guessing. So anything that kind of comes up in the movie world that's related to G.I. Joe, that's what we're going to be doing with you guys. Um, and yes, we thought there's been enough this week and just dropped a few, well, earlier this morning or late last night, however you want to see it. Um, we have got a bit of toy news to talk about as well. But Justin, how are you doing, buddy? It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a little while. I'm doing pretty good. Pretty good. Just trying to keep up with, with life. But yeah, more or less things are all right. How about is you? It, yeah, is it worth keeping up with life? <laughs> Is it worth it? Oh, there are moments where, you know, you kind of wonder. <laughs> is this worth all the effort? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, let's, well, you know, let's let's cheer ourselves up with some irrational fears. <laughs> no. Uh, so if you've been, if you watch The Weekly already, then you know that Pat and I were talking about irrational fears. I won't put Justin through that. Yes, I will. Uh, <laughs> later. Uh, but first, Justin, let's get stuck into the news, buddy, with uh, our first story in Paramount Restructuring News. <laughs> Last weekend, Deadline reported that the CEO and chairman of Paramount Pictures, Jim Giannopoulos, was stepping down from his position and that the head of Viacom CBS Inc.'s Nickelodeon Kids TV empire, Brian Robbins, would be taking over. An official press release confirmed the changes, including David Nevins taking over scripted series for Paramount Plus as well. Giannopoulos was instrumental in turning things around at Paramount after a torrid 2017, which saw the company lose a whopping $445 million. 100 million of that was lost on the last night alone. In addition, their lucrative partnership with foreign investors who are who are media came to an end, putting the company in a difficult position financially. However, before the end of the year, Paramount had signed a new agreement with Hasbro which saw the toy giant paying more towards their moves with greater creative control. This ensured the financial safety of the company and they went on to make a number of critically acclaimed films including A Quiet Place and Bumblebee. Mr Giannopoulos steps down at a time where the movie industry is taking an absolute beating due to the continued global pandemic situation so Mr Robbins has his work cut out for him and looks to be switching towards a more streaming platform uh justin interesting move here do you think this changes uh, do you think this change bodes well for paramount possibly i i think it's it's a sign of the times you know whether it bodes well for paramount themselves it might i mean i don't know what other studios are i mean we obviously pay most attention to paramount during you know yeah. considering they are kind of responsible for the snake eyes movie so i'm not sure if other studios are taking similar approaches by you know focusing some attention on streaming platforms um, you know, I'm trying not to read in too, too much into the fact that, you know, Snake Eyes was the last movie they, they released and now <laughs> they're like falling <laughs> apart as a studio. Um, <laughs> it's all Snake Eyes' fault. No. But, they, um, the, the, there is that feeling though, isn't there, that, you know, because it didn't do as well and you got like Top yeah. Gun. The other thing is Top Gun's getting pushed back and pushed back and exactly, pushed back. Exactly, yeah. And Tom Cruise is not rests. happy with that, is he? No, no, not at all. And I don't think the blame rests solely on Snake Eyes' shoulders by a, by a long margin. I mean, even as you said in this article, you know, the last night was kind of called out as being a big, huge source of loss um, of revenue. So, yeah, this seems like it's been, you know, a long, a long ways in the making and certainly wasn't helped by uh, the situation with the pandemic. But yeah, I really think, you know, unless something drastically changes, I think movie studios really have to start looking at how they are going to sort of weather a long-term storm. I yeah. mean, this is not, this is no longer an isolated incident. You know, I mean, it's not something to say, hey, just let's just buckle through for four months and get through it because quite clearly that's not going to do the trick. And I know for for some folks, myself included, you know, even, even once we kind of maybe come out of, you know, whatever the latest Delta variant situation is, um, are people going to be all that excited to go back to the theater? I mean, for me, you know, we're right in the middle of kind of another kind of pandemic surge. So obviously that played, played a role into it, but you know, for the first time in like 12 years, I didn't go to the theater to see the latest MCU movie. You know, I haven't seen Shang-Chi yet. I don't intend to see it in the theater. I'm just not, not quite ready to, to kind of make that, that leap again. So I think you're going to find that things like 
the, the landscape might be changing. And I think people like, you know, studios like Paramount who can recognize that and take steps uh, in that direction earlier rather than later are hopefully going to benefit because I really do think that whether people in the movie industry like it or not, you know, things are changing a little bit. People have better stereo and TV setups at home now. Um, they're going to realize that they can see a, a quote unquote big screen movie um, without the sticky floors and without the obnoxious people on their cell phone. Well, you know, other than it depends their, what house d- depends what your house is like. Well, that's fair. Fair point. Yeah. <laughs> it depends, what movie, <laughs> depends what movie you're watching as well. It depends what's going on in your man cave down in your basement where you know, where you've got your big screen TV. Yeah, that's that's a very fair point, Chris. But, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna make at, it. at least you at least you can own the stickiness. You know it's yours, so uh, maybe that'll make it a little bit better. I don't know. <laughs> Do not, do not come around my place to watch movies. Um, <laughs> uh, well, that kind of it does like lead into another story that we got um, this week as well. Paramount Movies have expressed a desire to scale back their big, big budget movies in favour of smaller productions that will directly go on their streaming service, Paramount Plus. According to Hollywood Reporter journalist Boris Kitt, what this all setting up, according to insiders, is Paramount retreating from big theatrical productions to focus on titles, remakes, branded content, cheap affair, that will service its streamer Paramount+. Plus. This makes a lot of sense in the current climate, and I can see them moving more towards streaming to build on their own service, and as you were saying before as well, Justin, it will almost certainly affect the pending renewal of the Hasbro agreement as well for the end of 2022, but I doubt we'll have any bearing on the Amazon Lady JTV series in the works, but we shall see. What do you think this means for any projects related to G.I. Joe going forward? Um, I mean, it could, yeah, like you said, it could be a landscape shift. I mean, it, it's, it really um, could kind of, it could sort of open the door in a way. I mean, if you look at kind of what the the largest sort of, you know, productions of theatrical entertainment content are these days, it's the stuff like Amazon and stuff like Netflix that mm. have never, and it's not necessarily the stuff that was in theater six months ago and is now streaming. It's their original content yeah. that they're developing for their own platforms. So clearly the landscape has already been kind of trending in that direction. And I think Paramount is kind of recognizing that and making their own shift, which makes a lot of sense. I mean, there's a lot, the only, I mean, the big losers kind of in all of this are probably the movie theaters themselves, yeah. the people who, who work there and, and own them and things like that, because they're the ones that are going to kind of um, bear the brunt of this. But I think if studios can be prepared, and I know Disney got in a little bit of a hot water with the whole Black Widow and Scarlett Johansson lawsuit, because- I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> there was some contractual stuff in there that was a little hinky, which you know doesn't necessarily surprise me. But I think if they can be prepared for that ahead of time and, and learn to write that legal jargon into their contracts and kind of, you know, design films for that release methodology, I think it'll be a lot better for everybody. Do you think G.I. Joe is in a good position then, having this Amazon Lady J series kind of in development? Do you think that's going to go ahead? Uh, or do you think that maybe they might be rethinking that? I mean, what are your thoughts regarding that? I would hope it's going to go ahead. I mean, in my mind, that's kind of the biggest avenue for entertainment content these yeah. days is streaming. Especially I think G.I. that's Joe. really, yeah, I, I really think G.I. Joe we've talked about this before as far as like does gi joe need to be a multi you know a huge big budget bonanza event or is it served better by you know series based streaming services and i think we'd all agree that the streaming based you know the the series based streaming services are probably preferable because there's such a wide cast of characters yeah you don't necessarily need to be bombarded with imax related special effects to tell the story i i think the gi joe as a brand is really built towards that sort of format uh, and I think, yeah, I think the Lady J series, as long as they stick with it and keep going forward with it, I think will um, could really benefit from that sort of format. I am a little, not maybe not surprised, but I'm wondering if Paramount's focus shift from big budget films to Paramount Plus will, because of their existing relationship with Hasbro and GI Joe, might start might lead to kind of streaming GI Joe shows on the Paramount Plus streaming service. Well, you see, that's what of, I'm thinking. This could be a blessing yeah, in disguise, in a sense. Exactly. I mean, we, we have discussed, haven't we, like I said in the past, and I've had conversations with multiple people about this as well, that mm-hmm. whole thing of GI Joe just being well-suited to long-form yeah. storytelling, you know, long animation kind of runs, and, you know, like one season's not going to do it. Do you know what I mean? Like, we, we never right. really got... Like we we got an element of closure with Renegades, but there was a lot more story to tell once you got sure. all the characters in place. Yeah. Um, Resolute was so short, but it was a you know it was like it was I suppose 
concise as a as a piece but again yeah, i think resolute suffered by being so short i agreed. think if they had given them a full season of something to work with i think they could have done amazing things with that format and that series but because they were so determined to cram it into 90 minutes or whatever i think um, like, they really it, had to cut out a lot of characterization and stuff was it like five or ten minute episodes they were releasing yeah it was it was five minute episodes and i think i don't even remember how many there were like it was basically yeah, an know. hour, an hour and a half. It was like an hour, an hour and a half, somewhere yeah. in that neighborhood. I think the last episode was longer than the others. Yeah. But yeah, it was It was basically like an hour to an hour and a half. I would of... watch that when I worked at Toys R Us in on the break, because every day there'd be a new episode, or maybe yep. every week, was it? Was it every day? I can't remember. But I remember going into the break room every, every like, you know, when I when it, when it was up, when I'm ready to go, getting YouTube up on my phone, just yep. boom, watch that. I was like all buzzing for the rest of the day. You get through the oh, rest yeah, of the, totally. uh, the work. The yeah, work I remember. Thing. I was weird. I was at a training session. I, I was in IT, but I was an en- a network engineer at the time. And I was at a Cisco training, um, a week long training boot camp kind of down in Burlington, Mass for that. And I remember carving out that time. Like as I got done with my training, you know, for the day, I would go back to the hotel and I would just basically just in time to kind of fire up the video and watch and watch resolute is pretty awesome it was, yeah it was a fun I, I did enjoy it i'm not gonna lie but yeah i agree with you i think yeah it suffers from that kind of crushed you know the exactly. story's got to be done in like a really short period of time and like we say this could be a blessing in disguise for gi joe yeah. as a brand not necessarily great elsewhere so, i mean it seems to be the thing doesn't it like if something succeeds in one place something else has to fail elsewhere and we could be looking at generally going to theaters could yeah. be the thing that suffers massively here yeah and and i think what what benefits some of these streaming services is when they can kind of become a home for you know obviously disney plus has this lockdown basically every star wars movie every marvel movie or whatever that's disney plus they've got that a hold on that um if paramount plus can somehow strike a similar kind of deal with the hasbro properties like gi joe transformers stuff like that and have every like streaming thing kind of be funneled the yeah. Paramount Plus, um, I think that would that would be a way to kind of boost subscription numbers and and get them their own sort of audience, so to speak. Um, you know, Absolutely. Whether or not toy fans would be willing to pony up, you know, eight bucks a month for another service, I don't know, but um, I think that's a great way to kind of show their uniqueness, you know, Paramount's uniqueness to kind of say, you know, this is where you come for entertainment tied to your favorite 80s nostalgia that sort of thing if they could get this right as well marketing wise like you say and everything could be like you know animation um and live action and yeah. any kind of like may- maybe films that they they want to start doing films again because they seem to be very attached to that especially hasbro sure. hasbro really you, you can tell they want to be they want to be kind of in part like partnered with this kind of thing but th- then i think if you had a TV series that lasted a longer period of time, your toys are on the on the shelves longer, maybe I, I selling would, more. Do you know what I mean? I would argue that you know beyond the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which is obviously kind of in a class of its own, I would argue that television shows or streaming shows have more, if they're done right, have more staying power and kind of more cultural relevance for a longer period of time than any movie possibly does. I yeah. mean, you look at something like Game of Thrones, that was kind of in the top market of discussion online for, you know, eight years, yeah. um, you know, where a movie will kind of come and go. And I know that's been a constant kind of bone of contention a little bit with how streaming services, whether you're a Netflix and you release all 10 episodes at once, everybody binges it and that they're done. Or if you release them, you know, trickle them out, you know, every week or whatever, so that somebody has, so they have something to talk about every single week is it kind of lead to a crescendo, which, um, you know, I, I can take or leave either one, but, um, yeah. but yeah, I think especially with stuff like WandaVision and, you know, um, you know, different you know, Loki, different shows like that, you know, Falcon and Winter Soldier, it keeps the discussion happening more yeah. regularly. I, I feel like if what if had been like an animated two hour feature, it would have been in the conversation for two days and then fallen off. But because it's this weekly release every Wednesday, people are talking about it again and, oh, maybe this leads to this and this connects with this. And it's just, I think that kind of provides a better format especially for gi joe where it's being discussed regularly throughout a long extended period of time and this probably i don't know um how people are going to take this not controversial statement but probably a lot easier for companies to put this content out Mm -hmm. onto something like paramount plus and then just do the marketing from where you know from where they are whereas with theaters you're dealing with 
standees and sending out mm-hmm. the, the actual film to, to all the different places, sending yep. out whatever, you know, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but, you know, I'm guessing, you know, sending all that information and all that stuff out to the theatres, getting right. all of those theatres dressed up for that kind of stuff, posters and this, that, and the other. Whereas if you're doing something like this, it's just there. It's, you know, it's yeah. boom, it's there in front of you. And then it's all over the internet and it's all over your phone. And that, that's the, yeah. they're the places that people are anyway. They're just, they're looking right. at screens the whole time. So I kind of feel like it is kind of like a byproduct of what's going on at the moment, but then also will probably be a lot easier. And again, I know theatres are losing out here and it kind of sucks. Yeah. But I, I just, you know what are you going to do like yeah and you know i might feel differently if i had a really nice theater near me that yeah. i went to and kind of enjoyed um i i will say for the the marvel cinematic universe releases i would typically i would take a day off from work and i would go down to hooks it and there's this big imax theater in hooks it new hampshire that i used to go to to see all those and then when the star wars movies came out i would deal with a bunch of friends see star wars movies every year um that was an event and i did enjoy that process um but for the most part you know, and that theater is unfortunately closed now with this whole yeah. pandemic thing. But but for the most part, if I'm just talking about going to my neighborhood theater to watch a movie, uh, my, to be honest, my local theaters are terrible. I mean, they're, <laughs> the sound is not great. You know, like I said, you know, garbage floors, you know, the audiences are kind of eh. They're just not that much fun. So um, I can't imagine reason- how I can't imagine how sticky that carpet is. <laughs> Uh, um, so, I mean, the only reason I would ever go to an MCU movie and see it in the theater was just so I could avoid spoilers, to be yeah, honest. I mean, yeah. that was the reason I did it, not because my theatrical experience was great, um, but just because I didn't want to be spoiled. And, you know, Shang-Chi, thankfully, you know, so far I haven't really been spoiled. I don't know how much there is to be spoiled on, yeah. but I, I can only imagine that at some point it's going to be kind of a pain in the ass to try to avoid, you know, the internet, you know, for 45 days until something goes to Disney plus. From when I was going to say, when's it out? When, it when's it out on Disney? Is it in October? I think I they say. said 45 days. So yeah, okay. I think October something is when Shang-Chi is. I was really hoping they'd release it like they did Black Widow, but obviously they, they're not, they can't do that again, can they? They don't want to get sued. Yeah, I mean, unless they can, you know, and I kind of blame Disney for that. I mean, yeah. Disney, you know, they, I think, you know, Warner Brothers was able to do something for Gal Gadot for for Wonder Woman. So, I mean, obviously, I think Disney had it in their capacity to do something for Scarlett Johansson. They should have. Mm. Um, so this I think the blame for this lies squarely on Disney's shoulders. So what they all they have to do is, you know, I mean, I say all they have to do. It's probably, you know, it's probably tons of metric reams of paper of contracts to go through. But they need to just figure out how to how to carve out some revenue from streaming to to get the actors their their due compensation yeah, totally. um, and just go forward with it yeah absolutely and well uh I, that kind of brings us to the end of the uh the paramount pictures news but we did get like a, a cool little bonus kind of bit of news uh, late last night earlier this morning in that In that, it looks like the latest movie classified wave featuring Scarlett and Akiko is showing up in targets around the US. Thanks to Dave Wanuski and 80s Toy Boy on Twitter, who both posted images of the figures purchased from targets in different parts of the country, it's very likely they'll be showing up in a store near you very soon. Justin, are you excited as I am to be getting these in hand? I'm doubly excited because not only am I excited that these are starting to show up, but I've actually got a local target Ta-da! opening with me opening. I think, I think the tentative date right now is October 12th. So that's a little less than a month away. And my daughter just got a job there. So inside source, Nice. Um, but yeah, it's uh, so I think it's going to, uh, I'm looking forward to, to potentially finding some of this stuff in stores. You're going to get going to be getting a lot of messages following that statement. <laughs> hey, Justin, we should edit you, that uh, out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I already told her. I said I, I'm I'm gonna give you a piece of paper with pictures on it every single time you go in for shift, and you're on duty. So go right, into the back, get all of these, exactly. hide them away. <laughs> <laughs> Call me, text me, and I'll come in. And I'll come around the back. Them, yeah. You hand them to me. No money changes hands. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna be a heist. Obviously, you're gonna get yeah. a team together. I hope for for GI Joe figures. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, yeah, I, I want absolutely. to be in that team. I think Pat will be the brains. <laughs> He's, it's got to be Pat. Nobody else has got him. I'll be the distraction. No I'll be the distraction. Yeah. Um, and you can go in there and do all the the dirty work. How's that sound? <laughs> I'm I'm for it. 
Why you not? Got, you got the headset on. You can you can hang from the ceiling and all. Oh, all perfect. Mission Impossible style. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> like Tom Cruise. Uh, but honestly, on the serious note, I can't wait to get these figures in hand because yeah, they look great. I've wanted that Akiko for so long, and yeah. it's finally. I feel like it's it's finally going to be here very soon. Well, I'm actually excited because I mean, I love I I like the classified Scarlet anyway, but the movie design Scarlet almost looks. I like her a little bit more than just the regular classified version. So I think she'll look great just as kind of a stand-in for Scarlet, you know, kind of with the rest of them. I'm, yeah, totally. I think they look really great. I think I've got them on pre-order from Big Bad Toy Store, but I don't. I haven't heard anything about when they're arriving there but i think i've got them on on order from hasbro pulse so oh you'll get them 2024 somewhere 30 around 26 during the before yeah. four times <laughs> I, I got a package from the last i got a like beast war scorpionock that i actually forgot that i pre-ordered and i'm like wow this came in from hasbro pulse yeah. on its own yeah no snake eyes or baroness <laughs> Storm Shadow. Storm Shadow. Ni- yeah. A third of the way there, guys. I'm a third of the way there. Um, <laughs> uh, what the one what this has reminded me of though a little bit is a little bit of sadness because I I do, you know well obviously with the the poor performance of the film I don't see them doing a ton more figures. Yeah. They they might drop a few here and there in the future in and around other waves possibly, but mm-hmm. I can't see them doing a lot more. Even though there are a few characters out there that I would love to have, like I'd love to have. Blind Master, Hard Master, yep. Sen would be really cool. I'd love yep. to have the like Ara Shikagi Temple Guard. I think would be dope. Kenta, yep. obviously. I oh think yeah, would be a for cool sure. One. But you just, I just have a feeling we're no, we're probably not going to see that, are we? Yeah, not only because yeah, I mean, I think if the movie had done Gangbusters, there would have been a good chance of that. But I mean, with with the financial, you know, kind of outcome the way it came out, and the fact that the rest of the figures would be kind of you know different guys and sort of generic ninja outfits yeah I, I just i'm not sure i see it i would love to see it i would love to see a hard master especially i think it's it's really a shame that 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 figure would not you know may not get made but you're right i mean blind master would have been great you know um kenta obviously would have been fantastic uh they all would have been some really cool candidates to get in figure form but i agree i just don't think it's in the cards at this point point. and maybe some like a yakuza three pack would be pretty neat. Like that, there's that one guy that has like a bit of a face to face. You know, the one guy that does the speech before Kenta turns up in the w- warehouse. Yeah, you know, like some like him and maybe a couple of the goons. Kind oh of thing. man, yeah, some neat. dudes in in that'd suits be... with swords and Uzis or something. I mean, that'd be so fantastic. Yeah. And I just you just know fantastic. how good it would be in classified scale as well. Like, yeah, I think they could do some cool stuff with that. And then make you know, <laughs> probably probably would never have happened. But Snake Eyes in his. <laughs> His uh, fish gutting um, <laughs> <laughs> overalls and and, oh, and man. Stuff, with a gutted fish, a couple of them. Yeah. Be fun. No, be, s- serious awesome. note. Serious note. Him and Storm Shadow in their kind of like chill out attire or like yeah. ninja basic ninja attire, where they're you know. You mean the uniforms they actually appeared in throughout most of the movie and not like the last ten seconds? Yeah, yep. that'd have been good. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And maybe even an Akiko with that weird silver poncho she wears, like when you finish a marathon that they drape yeah. you with. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, maybe that. But like, I, there's again, there are multiple cool figures that could come out. Yeah, there, absolutely. And it just pains me to think we're not going to see them. Yeah, I agree. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of missed potential. It seems like with some of that stuff. Yeah, and you know, if we do get them, fantastic. Um, yeah. But you know, we'll see. Anyway. Justin, that's it for the end of the news, mate. Uh, but we do have one more thing we've got to quickly discuss. And that is in virtual running club news. Don't suppose you got this, did you? Did you get this uh, delivered? Um, I got my T. Yeah, you got the buff. The T-shirt. My, look at that. My diagram. Really? I don't I don't know if I got that. I only got my T-shirt and my, my little this is my... gator thing. This is basically my uh, registration tag. Nice. You know, you, maybe you I do have that. You pin it on your shirt, like in a proper race. Just and get a staple and go <laughs> <laughs> straight to the skin. Yeah, I always, whenever to the I, nipple. I haven't run in a little while. But whenever I did, I would go there and I would always forget my safety pins, and it would be a freaking disaster because I'd have to find safety pins. You'd be licking but... it and sticking it to your chest. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, but that buff is really cool, isn't it? The little neck um, thing. I love that. Yeah, this is goes around my neck and i have to because we got mask mandates in my town again so i can't can't set foot on the streets without but there you go you got the something. snake snake eyes visor on it as well which is dope yeah. 
I really yeah. like. I thought that was really cute. I love that thing. Very, it's very cool. Yeah, I like it a lot. The t-shirt's yeah, really nice the, too. But the yeah, there you go. Thank you. I was going to say mine's in the wash at the moment. Look at that. It's lovely. I really like the yeah. Chicago symbol on the on the arm as well. Very nice. Yep. We should have both been wearing them. Really, we did not really think about this. I've even all. got it. I've got it sitting You're here because I knew we were going to talk about it, but I didn't. I, I should have just worn it. I am wearing a Snake Eyes t-shirt and hat, but still, like I'm wearing. Well, I'm wearing a tough mutter, so I guess that's kind of an exercise related. There you one. go. It's there you go. We're, we're fine. Yeah. We're fine. We're yeah. fine. Yours is the Perfect. tough mutter uh, Cobra '90s Viper <laughs> t-shirt, isn't it? And I got to say, when I went to this Tough Mudder, I saw Fred Axon from Boss Fight Studio there. I didn't even know he was going to be there, but he was there with his wife. Oh, did, cool. he, did he actually do the event? Or was his wife watching? did, yeah. Oh, that's his wife amazing. Did. Yeah. Crazy. He was spectating. Crazy. Yeah. Small world. I just lined up to get to, to go in, and I looked to my left, and there's Fred. Amazing. Wow. Of all the people to see. Of all the I know. <laughs> uh, but it was awesome. Funny enough, coming back to the, the running club, we're going to have to do our challenges pretty soon, aren't we? We've only yes. got like a thing to the end of October, I believe it and is. And you know what? I'm even I'm, I'm better prepared because I've got something else to share. We just uh, I just made a little purchase of a, a NordaTrack EXP 10i treadmill. Wow. So even though we've got mask mandates and it's kind of a pain in the butt to go out running um, on the streets with a mask. I mean, I've got I've got my gator, so I guess I could. But um, yeah, but it's but yeah, I've got a treadmill, so I can do that. Unless it's inside. freezing cold, like I, I've run in like freezing cold temperatures before, and it's great to have a mask yes. on. But any other time, any other temperature, and it is like horrible, isn't it? So and my glasses, they just they fog instantly, and it's really tough. You know, I, I can't see without them, so I can't run without them, and I don't have contacts because I'm a pussy and I don't like putting stuff in my eyes. But um, but yeah, we're, that's the worst thing. I can deal with kind of the breathing, you know, it's just, it's just struggle, but I can deal with it. But the issue is just my glasses fog up like every thirty seconds, and it's just such a pain. My eyes fog up, so I can't see anything. I'm kidding. That's fair. Yeah. So in terms of like our updates, I've got a little bit of work to do still. Um, I'm prob I'm actually flying out to the UK uh, to see the family in a couple awesome. of weeks. Hopefully, we think fingers crossed that that all goes ahead. It's all been Fantastic. booked and everything, so you know, hopefully we'll get to do that. Um, while I'm out there, I'm going to take the opportunity to do my 5Ks on the beach. So, yeah. So jealous. Out in, in, with nobody around on a, effectively a private beach, I'm going to yeah. just be running around uh, doing my the, 5Ks. Not to drag this out, I know you got a delivery, but the first time I ever ran longer than a mile outside it was on the beach in florida i was there as a business on a business trip and there was just something about running on it's, the beach i just ran and i just kept on going and I'm that's you know goosebumps. i ran like five or six miles and that was that converted me i started running longer distances ever since it was great i, th I think people are worried that like running on the sand is difficult but i actually find it it's so much better on your joints yeah like, and it depends what i mean depends what the quality of the sand if you're close enough to the water the hard the ground's a little bit harder and it's not quite so bad but, but yeah just, if you, you do, just if you're running through thick sand it's it can be a, it just can be have, tough just having but, that bit of give you know yeah. on that on that kind of thick but not hard sand where it just kind of yeah. you get like about i don't know like an inch half an inch kind of give that helps so much for me and i loved it and the awesome. air the fresh air and the yeah, views are spectacular so you're going to be seeing yeah. you're going to be seeing a lot of my uh, updates are going to be videos of me running on a beach hopefully in the next Beautiful. couple of weeks fingers Beautiful. crossed <laughs> anyway buddy thanks so much for jumping on yet no again uh, for well the it's an irregular movie update now but um, we're still going to be doing this as and when the news comes in. Mate, thank you so much for jumping on. Yeah, my pleasure. Anytime, man. Thank you. That brings us to the end of this episode. Thank you for watching the Full Force Movie News Burst Weekly. Massive thank you to my awesome co-host Justin Bell, who I didn't test for the last time as to what the show's called. See you next time. Oh, actually, just before we see you next time, what's your most irrational fear, Justin? Oh my god. You put me on the spot. Big time. Uh, irrational fear? I don't, I don't like talking in front of a lot of people. Perfect. Just like what we're doing right Just now. Just like what we're doing right now. That's why it's <laughs> irrational. It's it's okay if I've got a screen between us. It's when like they're like actually present. There. Just picture them. I have naked. issues. Just picture yeah, them. Yeah, doesn't uh, it doesn't do them any favors for me. Any favors? <laughs> doesn't do any favors for them. <laughs> doesn't do anybody any favors. <laughs> uh, anyway, and as always, after three, one, two, three. Four. Naked, talking in front of everybody. Um, <laughs>
Make sure you get involved with the discussion by liking, sharing and commenting on these videos and as always you can keep up with the show after listening by following on Twitter at The Full Force, liking the Facebook page facebook.com forward slash The Full Force and if you would like to contact the show you can message us on either of those platforms with feedback and questions. We also have a Patreon page so if you want to show your support for the show, see your name up in lights on these videos or enjoy exclusive bonus content then check out patreon.com forward slash the full force podcast or click on the link on any of the posts this podcast appears in full force